Welcome. Welcome to my dungeon. Welcome to Cauldron Script. I'm your host, Master Cauldron. If you're new to the show, we use our combined 30 years of BDSM experience and my 20 years working in the psychology field to dispel myths, get rid of stereotypes, and answer your questions about BDSM. You can call in at 865-268-4005 to leave your questions or visit the crypt at cauldronscript.com. In this episode of The Crypt, we're diving heavily into psychology today in an attempt to help people recognize abusive relationships and get out of them. Uh, this is a topic that I consider one of the core topics of the crypt, as this is the reason I started the show almost five years ago. Good afternoon, Mayfair. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? Um, better than I have been this past weekend, so yay. Yay for improvement. All right, well, let's hit those rules to love by and uh, jump into the topic that is brought to you by inclusionwoodworks.com, my personal uh, company for kinky, kinky, kinky and vanilla woodworking projects. Uh, you can check it out, Culture Script, uh, or uh, excuse me, inclusionwoodworks.com. So rules to love by, rule number one, safe, sane, consensual, and informed. Rule number two, kinky, that's K-N-K-I, and comes from the Kinky app, available on all platforms. Not a sponsor, but it does stand for knowledge, no intolerance, kindness, and integrity. And rule number three, the quote from Mr. Paul Young, submission is not about authority, and it is not about obedience. It is all about relationships of love and respect. Now, Mayfair sent me this article, and uh, it's not like a bunch of drab reading uh, as some of the articles in the past have been. I know most of you don't care much for the articles. Uh, this is one of those cases where I looked at it, and I'm like, well, okay, let's not reinvent the wheel here. Uh, this is How to Recognize the Signs of Mental and Emotional Abuse, Season 4, Episode Number 9. Uh, this was medically reviewed by Timothy J. Legg, Ph.D., CRPN, and written by Ann uh, Patrang Patranglio uh, and updated December 6th of 2018. So an overview of this, you probably know many of the more obvious signs of mental and emotional abuse, but when you're in the midst of it, it can be easy to miss the persistent undercurrent of abusive behavior. Psycholo uh, psychological abuse involves a person's attempt to frighten, control, or isolate you. It is in the abuser's words and actions, as well as their persistence in these behaviors the abuser could be your spouse or other romantic partner, of course. They could be your business partner, your parent, a caretaker. Anybody in your life can do these things. No matter who it is, you don't deserve it, and it's not your fault. Continue reading to learn more, including how to recognize it and what you can do next. Now, Mayfair, when you saw this, you thought, well, this is uh, uh, possibly even more so in BDSM, harder to recognize, right? Yes. Um, so my th thought process behind it after, especially after I read some of it was, it's such a weird fine line there because some of these things we do for fun. Some of these activities are negotiated for whether it be a certain time frame or 24-7 um, but most of the cases, um, you've talked about several times, nothing is 24-7. There has to be vanilla. There has to be a limit. There has to be a line. Um, and sometimes um, we forget to stop or the abuser just doesn't stop. Um, I'd read an article while I was looking through um, this, and I didn't save it, but basically this guy has a fetish, and they named it, but I can't remember the name of it. But he likes to watch his, his uh, girlfriend pee. Um, which is fine. If that's your thing. Except that if she pees without him. He gets livid. And has like a meltdown. Oh, she God. has not been able to pee. Without either recording it. Or 
having him in the room to watch her for five years. Um, they have a child together even after she had the baby and was, you know, kind of self-conscious about all of the things that happened to your area in those days following a baby. Mm-hmm. He's still insistent on watching her. If she wakes up and has to pee, she's not allowed she's not allowed to wake him up because he gets angry. So she has to hold it. Um, she's had urinary tract infections. She's had bladder infections. Like she's had all kind of stuff from having to hold her pee because he gets like, just loses his mind. If she wow. pees without him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's and almost, that fine line. <laughs> well, and you know, to some, kink. To but some that not... does a, appear to be a fine line, when in reality that is certainly a an abusive that, situation. Yes, that's the extreme. Oh, yeah, but, you know that kind of thing where yes, it's agreed upon, negotiated thing, but there's a time you have to let it fall aside for reality. Yeah, where did you see that article at? Um, in my Google searches this morning. No, oh, okay. All right. Um, I do want to say hello quickly to the chat room. Sub X 13. Let's see. There's Justin, uh, who is her master anomalous mats curtain call EMR. Uh, hello. She says, dang, that is messed up. Curtain call says, uh, that is messed up. Good morning. Lilac wine in down <laughs> way down under. So, uh, uh real go quick. ahead. Before we yep. move on, Fetish Artists had an announcement at 3.04. Okay. Uh, said, got some quick news. Uh, Blackthorn Virtual Market is this weekend. Uh, House of Wolfframe. Is it Wolf Wolfframe? Yeah, Wolfram. Uh, Wolfram, sorry. The Dungeon Store, WIA w- and Leather, and many more are there. Very, very cool. Blackthorn Virtual Market. So that's an online thing. Um and he said that, or they said that it is um, on FetLife with more data, more information. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, definitely uh, check that out. Those signs are, I love those online markets. They're really cool. Um, I wish I could get a link to that to put into the uh, the chat there, but I know, I don't think participants can post the links, but uh, details are on FetLife, so. Uh, all right, let's jump into this. We got the overview. This is broken up into a couple of easy, easy little tidbits. Uh, humiliation, negating, and criticizing. These are these tactics are meant to undermine your self esteem. The abuse is harsh and unrelenting in matters big and small. Now, this is obviously a way that we play, which is, which is why I wanted to bring Mayfair's point right off the jump in here of these are ways that we play, but we can't do this 24 seven. And, uh, you know, even a 24 or 24 seven master slave relationship has breaks. It's our job uh, in the dominant position to recognize when these breaks need to be given and say, okay, you know, if you make your submissive or your slave, uh, not, uh, not use furniture, they can only sit in the floor. Then it's up to us to say, you know what? Um, this is really starting to affect them on a psychological level. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to call for a check-in and bring them up to the couch with me uh, or just, you know, have them come sit on my lap in a non kinky sexual way, whatever, a non service way. And we're just going to cuddle and do the things that reassure them that they're in the relationship for reasons of love and respect. Uh, Mayfair, what are some examples of this, of the humiliation, Uh, negating, and criticizing? So name calling, uh, blatantly calling you stupid or a loser, um, or even harsher, uh, derogatory pet names. 
Um, so not like baby, you're sweetie, but like my chubby pumpkin, uh, my little knuckle dagger. Dragger. Um, dragger. Oh, yeah. I knuckle see. dragger, which I'll by the by, that's also a very um, racist comment to make. Oh, I didn't understand it because I was reading it as a dagger. You can see uh, where my mind goes. <laughs> to knives and blades. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't have a have a thing there. Um, character assassination. This usually involves the word always. You're always late, wrong, screwing up, disagreeable, and so on. Basically, they're saying you're not a good person. Um, yelling. Uh, yelling, screaming, swearing are meant to intimidate you and make you feel small and un- inconsequential. Um it might be accompanied by fist pounding or throwing things. You know, on that one, um, the get together in July, uh, there was uh, there was a, a a situation where, I mean, that was I guess this person's go to version of being a dominant was just to verbally overpower, yell and scream about everything, good and bad. And uh, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's not, that's not cool. That's not cool. Uh, Kurt, uh, Kurt and Carl asked how calling someone a knuckle dragger is racist. Um, that actually goes back to when uh people of color were considered animals, not human and compared to apes. Thus the way that apes walk dragging knuckles. Um, yes. And I know, uh, and I actually, I learned that from, uh, from one of my friends of color that, uh, referred to her children that way. And I laughed as first time I ever heard it. And she says, oh yeah, no, by the way, don't you ever say that? And I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my understanding of it. Not something that should probably be said or anyone should be called. So and I think I when, when in doubt, error on the side of caution is not erring. Uh, <laughs> it's not an error. Um, now, EMR says, I never heard that as a racial insult before. Curtain calls as well, crap. Now I have to eliminate another phrase from my vocabulary. Well, uh, I don't, I don't know. That's, uh, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm, that's just what I've heard. So maybe I'm wrong. It's happened many times. <laughs> All right. Um, go ahead there with, well, I'll take the next one. Patronizing. Oh, sweetie, I know you try, but this is just beyond your understanding. That will piss me off in a heartbeat. Ooh, we would fight. <laughs> you get that at work, don't you? Or, or I you do. have. You have. I, I have, yes. I've I've <laughs> It's a boys club where I work and um, because I'm a girl, obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it it, is such it's when they say toxic masculinity, like when I first heard that, I really didn't understand it. But my God, uh, working in the environment that we work in, because we do you work for the company and it's a very large company, I contract to that company Mm -hmm. and um it's ridiculous uh (laughs) oh buffalo max hey he says (laughs) oh he says hello i made it to church (laughs) dem's fighting words says fetish artist uh hey baby love um all right uh okay sorry pwb says okay sorry gotta do it and won't chat much Cause we all know my crap, me, red, 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 him. There is no red abuse much. Yes, absolutely. So art says it's annoying. Um, yeah, that's a, oh my God. But at the same time, Mayfair, you tend to, to use sweetie a lot when you're in work mode, which also tends to, uh, kind of sound a little patronizing at times 
I use Sweetie in in most of my life. Um, I stopped it with you because it was um, I was not allowed to use any kind of um, relationship like names. It was Sir Cauldron, um, but like Babe or Sweetie or any of that was off limits. That was reserved for your wife. But it's part of it's a Southern thing. Like Southern people use Sweetie, Honey, Babe all the time. Um, it's just part of our natural language now. Yeah. It's just <laughs> part of trying to be nice. Ooh, now you done made my country accent come out. <laughs> uh, Emerald Wolf says, love when someone with a degree in an adjacent field does that stuff and then proceeds to mansplain no matter their gender. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Um, I had to get on my onto my realtor once for mansplaining to me. <laughs> and she's awesome. Yes. And she's a great realtor, but oh my God. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, public embarrassment. They pick fights, expose your secrets, or make fun of your shortcomings in public. That goes back to praise in public. Um, Criticize. Correct in private. Yeah. Correct, criticize, and private. Um, public embarrassment, the uh, dismissiveness. You tell them about something that's important to you, and they say it's nothing. Body language like eye rolling, smirking, head shaking, and sighing help convey the same message. Go ahead. Uh, joking. The jokes may have a grain of truth to them or be complete fabrication. Either way, they make you look foolish. That's one I have to work on. And th that is the reason why everybody said, oh, Cauldron, you know, he he's they they always give me the shit sandwich there, which is where you get a compliment and then you get a a, a name call or an extreme critique. <laughs> And it's followed up with, but he really, really is like, he'll do anything to help you. Um, and it usually goes, yes, he's, he's, uh, whatever, whatever, but then he's an, he's an asshole, but then he'll do anything in the world to help you. And that's because I have a very quirky sense of humor and I do once something is, is done and over with usually in the moment then I'm done and I'm over with it and everybody uh, is not like me and there are times when I forget that so I will bring something up in a joking manner about something that's happened in the past not realizing that maybe it's too soon <laughs> and uh, yeah that's something that uh, I definitely need to work on myself a uh, sarcasm Mayfair would never be sarcastic. Often just a dig in disguise. When you object, they claim to have been teasing and tell you to stop taking everything so seriously. Why so serious? <laughs> Insulting your appearance. They tell you just before you're leaving, your hair is ugly or your outfit is clownish. And now you don't have time to change. <laughs> and now you don't have time to change. What what what's that from? I don't know. Like if you're like if you tell me if you were to tell me my outfit looked terrible, I would change it. Like, but if you're like just as you're about to leave, well now if I what if I change and we're gonna make us late and then then you're gonna Tell everybody that we're late because I was being sensitive about my clothes and it's a whole big snowball gaslighting thing. Ah, gotcha. gotcha. I, can, I can see how that would go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fetish artist says, I also have an issue with sir, not because of gender, because I work for a living. Um, wow. That's very, very military based. Uh, and I wasn't, a, I don't know if you were in the military or not, but I know a lot of people who were, uh, 
in the military, uh, enlisted men and women uh, that have a major issue with being called sir. And I, I use sir a lot to everybody. Um, if, if myself and uh, Jack Gray, who is a great uh, friend, a friend of the show, a personal friend, if we're talking and it's, I mean, I've even done it in the dungeon. Uh, there's, he's a switch, but uh, even before I knew that he switched, I would often, if he asked a question or something, I would, my response would include, sir, just out of being Southern. And that's what we do. Uh, fetish artist continues said, and I know a lot of women who hate the word man because of age. Absolutely. Um, Mom. Oh yeah. God, your mother. Um, and that's not just cause of age. I think that's just cause it gives her something to <laughs> complain about. <laughs> Love her, but. Uh, I, I, says, <laughs> I, I had to take a deep breath the first time I got called sir in the bedroom. It slipped out and real and realized it, it was complimentary. <laughs> oh, I don't know why that tickles me so hard, but all right. Uh, go ahead, Mayfair. Where are we at? Belittling your accomplishments. Your abuser might tell you that your achievements mean nothing. Or they may even claim responsibility for your success. Yeah, and the last part of that, they may even claim responsibility for your success. Um, as a dominant, I do claim some responsibility for your success. But I also claim 100% responsibility for your for failures. Because that if you're going to take the good you also have to take the bad if if you screw up then it's ultimately on me um yeah and that's kind of a, a parental type thing as well you know with children if your children are complete screw ups or if they are great kids and turn into great adults and they screw up, uh, parents will take responsibility or should take some responsibility in that. Uh, I think it happens less and less nowadays. Uh, put down your interests. They might tell you that your hobby is a childish waste of time, which is only okay if your hobby is gaming, uh, or you're out of your league when you play sports. <laughs> Really, it's that they'd rather you not participate in activities without them. And that's very, very true for an abusive situation. It's that they're jealous. They're jealous that you have a life outside of them. Uh, for you, the, the podcast listener, Mayfair, when I said that about gaming, crossed her arms, gave a very kind of... Uh, duck face kind of <laughs> pissed off look <laughs> because I am not a gamer and it's something that is certainly a joke between Mayfair and I, 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 I understand uh, the escape for me. The escape is, is movies. It's TV shows. It's binge watching things um, for other people. It's games and like with anything else, if it becomes my life to the point where I'm uh, checking out on my obligations, then it's a problem. And I think that, you know, it's the same thing with, with video games. Uh, so it, it's just always been kind of a funny thing. But, but I have played games, video games with you before. You have. And... Uh, I've tried. It's just hmm. not really, it's just not my thing. It's not my, it's not, I'd rather play a, the original Nintendo and some Mario brothers than some of the, the new stuff. So, all right, go ahead and take this last one. 
under this section. And just to recap, this is uh, humiliation, negating, uh, and criticizing. So, baby love, I know you said that everything's not so obvious all the time. Um, remember, this is just for humiliation. Um, we're getting into other different kinds of the emotional abuse here soon and sometimes some of these may feel more subtle um maybe i don't remember all the list um but the last one here in humiliation is pushing your buttons once your abuser knows about something that annoys you they'll bring it up or do it every chance they get and then they get to call you crazy they get mm. to to point out that you're being over emotional you're being ridiculous if you act like that nobody's gonna take you Nobody else is going to want you and put up with that kind of craziness. It, yeah. it it snowballs into that gaslight of I'm the only person who would ever want you. So you're yeah. stuck with me. What somebody earlier threw into the chat, uh, gaslighting. I think it was curtain call. Yeah. I, I believe you're correct there. Um, yeah. Anomalous match just said it as well. That's, uh, that's the gaslighting. Yeah. Um, PWB also expressing, uh, EMR Ken Hawk also expressing gaslighting. Yeah. It, it, and abusers are excellent at manipulating situations for them to be able to criticize and humiliate you. And again, there is negotiated humiliation, negating, criticizing, we're talking about day-to-day -day life when things are not in a scene. Um, that's when it becomes detrimental to people's health. Uh, and it can, it can become detrimental to someone's health in a scene. Uh, I played with two people yesterday. Amazing time. Uh, there's quite often degradation, humiliation during that, but that scene had a start point. Those or those scenes had a start point. They had an ending point. And if this stuff was part of it, then once the scene was over, that stops. And then the reinsurance reassurance, that's what aftercare is about and secondary aftercare. Um, and dealing with aftermath, as uh, uh, Master Gabriel has talked about here on the show before. And uh, that's part of uh, how they, uh, his household learns Sini is dealing with that. So, all right, let's, uh, man, this is a great conversation. You guys are having a good time in the chat room talking about this. So don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, and share this um ring that notification bell all that good fun stuff for the youtubes we are so close to hitting that thousand mark uh, i want to give a shout out go ahead um and mention my uh pro producer buffalo max 92 Executive producer, Shadowy Fox, Unicorns Angel, Johnny Farrell, Haru Webb, Ray Webb, Anomalous Matts, Just Call Me Ash, Key, DeBoat, and Frozen Moron. Uh, we'll get to the senior producers here momentarily. Also, Curtain Call from uh, BDSM for the short, uh, BDSM 101 for the short attention span. It's a, a channel here on YouTube. Uh, said earlier that he has uh, thrown some money in support of the show. So thank you so much curtain call no one took that as a brag i appreciate you letting me know so i can give you a shout out for doing so um uh we are this is a good show and a good topic thank you thank you so much um we call it let's see do my cat's behavior count as gaslighting because Wilson just peed on my new book? Mayfair responded to that and says, I think we call that an asshole. <laughs> I love it. I think Jack, he's an, he, he's an ass at least five times a day. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, uh, and speaking of curtain call, the there's going to be an episode posted today. Uh, finished editing it. I just got to get it posted today. 
that has uh, myself and Curtain Call uh, chatting in it. It's a great episode talking about some of the stuff on his channel and diving into our respective perspectives on BDSM and uh, the educational side of it, preventing abuse, uh, preventing harm. Hurt is good. Harm is bad. So, all right. Let's carry on. Mayfair, what is this next section coming up? Control and shame. So trying to make you feel ashamed of your inadequacies is just another path to power. Tools of the shame and gain control. And control game include uh, threats. Telling you they'll take the kids and disappear. Or saying there's no telling what I might do. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Monitoring your whereabouts. They want to know where you are at all time and insist that you respond to calls or text immediately. They might show up just to see if you were where you were supposed to be. Now, uh, this is another one that's just a fine line for, for kinksters because as a submissive, I am supposed to respond to your texts and calls immediately, sir. Um, mm -hmm. And that's part of our agreement. Um, mm -hmm. unless it's my off time, uh, I am to be available to you when you need me. And when it comes to this one, uh, this is where you have to look at the whole picture. You can't look at just this one thing and say, well, the, then, okay, I'm being abused in this BDSM relationship in this dynamic, uh, because, this is one of those things that is negotiated in many contracts. But if you have this mixed with some of these others, and this wasn't part of the negotiation. I mean, when, when you and I were talking about this Mayfair and like, you know, there's, I want to know these certain things. This there's certain times when I'm going to absolutely need you available and I'm going to need to know where you are and what's going on. And, you know, uh, but it's all negotiated. Um, <clears throat> when, when granny passed, mm -hmm. if, and you were, you were or before she passed and you were at your mother's house and you were spending time with her. Uh, <clears throat> and had I needed you at that time, then that would have been negated on my side, meaning that I wouldn't have pushed that. Whereas if it was an abusive situation, I probably would have minimized the situation and said, well, I mean, my God, why are you so upset? She's old. She's been dying for the past hundred years and uh, you need to be available to me because that's in the contract. And you know, you're just a terrible submissive and why can't you be more like somebody else and compare you negatively to someone else um, that would really really grab you by the balls and, and, uh, and screw you up and make you feel useless. Um, no, no, I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that. In fact, uh, when, when my brother died, you were at your mom's and mm -hmm. I was trying to get in touch with you. Uh, you had left your phone on char on the charger and it wasn't possible. You felt like crap over that, but I mean, that was on, on Thursday and we had just had the service for your grandmother on Monday. It was completely okay. And nothing, nothing whatsoever for you to have felt bad about. I, uh, we were cleaning granny's room out. Uh, so it was a very emotionally charged time for me and mom. We mm. were laughing, crying, groaning because we found all the things she'd hoarded that, she swore she didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God love it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but that would be a, a perfect example of that. Like, well, whatever's happening in your life doesn't matter because I'm the master. I actually, it wasn't a BDSM relationship, but I actually have 
uh, Granny has been on, she'd been on her deathbed before. The doctors called in family um, in the hospital. They said she's not coming out of the hospital if she, she's not willing to fight. Um, so they called in family members. And yeah. uh, when my mom called and told me that, I was with my boyfriend. Uh, we were actually like in Kingsport, Kingston, the one toward Johnson City, which everyone yeah, that is. Yeah, Kingsport. Um, for work and I went and sat down beside him and I told him hey I might have to go they've called in the family for granny and I leaned my shoulder on or my head onto his shoulder and uh was trying to find comfort in my boyfriend who was my person or supposed to be my person and I swear to you he pushed my head away and laughed at me and said well she's dying you just have to deal with it there's nothing you can do about it like, there's no sense of crying. It's done. Like, you can't change it. So, just deal. Oh, my God. So, I, you've never told me that before. Um, Yeah. It's... That was the 10-year guy oh, that I kept going back to. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, something important to bring up also uh, from, from uh, Master Gabriel. Hello. Good afternoon. I hope you and your house are doing well. Uh, but he says using self-proclaimed triggers to move behaviors of the other person. Now, this is this is just <clears throat> say you get busy at work, Mayfair, and mm -hmm. I had texted you and and you wasn't you weren't able to respond, and it was nine o'clock in the morning, and you get off at 345 and at at your home. Uh, at 4.45 after you've stopped to grab some, some dinner or something, whatever, and you call me and you, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get to respond uh, other than to tell you I'm leaving work, stopping, grabbing food and coming home. And, uh, and I say, well, you know, it, being abandoned is a trigger for me and, and you didn't respond. So that just seems like, you know, you were doing that intentionally to hurt me because you know that. That's so freaking manipulative. Hmm. Um, even if it's true, it's manipulative. <laughs> Don't do that crap. Uh, comment from Junicorn's Angel. It says, I was in trouble if I didn't respond when I was working. It, oh, <laughs> it caused many arguments. He would call my office to reach me and then start a fight on the phone while I was with my coworkers. That's such crap. That is such crap for somebody to do that. So uh, one of our agreements for our contract is work is work. And if I'm at work, I that's my job. That's my role. I'll be back to being available to you and your submissive when I walk out that work door, because until that point, my focus, because I am in leadership, well, I was in leadership. Like I have to be, I have to be present in that moment. I can't be submissive and be leader. Yeah. It yeah. confuses my poor little brain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was, there was, there have been things that um, we've toyed around with, uh, talk, well, not really toyed around with, but talked about, about you doing some things at work, whether it was uh, a naughty picture or, you know, something like that. And it's like, no, I, I cannot do that from work because I have to be, and with, to go back to what we were talking about originally with that, that toxic male environment that you work in. I would be flat out like just a, a, an absolute asshole to not understand that, especially since I work in it, hmm. uh, to, to understand how, okay, you're a leader. You cannot drop into a submissive role and risk being stuck there for the day with the, the men that you work around because they would run all over you. Um, You'd be a crying mess. Uh, and, and that's nothing against your strength as as a leader or as a woman. Um, nothing against your character. Rate. It's Yeah, it's just, it's. but for me, if I didn't understand that, then that would be a situation where 
if you stood your ground and I stood my ground on it, that would be a detrimental factor to our dynamic and our relationship because that's nothing that you could do. And you would have to tell me, okay, well, you know, uh, here's your collar. And, um, and I couldn't do anything but accept it. <laughs> I want to bring up something that baby love and sir, uh, has said, or baby love has said, uh, this is also where teasing a friend about being such a good sub can actually reinforce the situation they're in, uh, referring to an abusive situation. If you are, and this is the way that I'm taking this, and you may have meant it a different way. So if I have, if it's different, please correct me. But, um, well, with the, the word teasing in there, I think I am taking it wrong, but it's also a good example. So if uh, baby love is in an, if she was in a, an abusive situation and all of her friends are, are listening and telling her what a good submissive she is, she's doing all the things and, and just dealing and moving on it would reinforce her to accept this abusive behavior. And I want to be very clear here. Baby love is not in an abusive situation. Um, she is in a, an amazing marriage and dynamic from the outside point of view in knowing these lovely, lovely people. So, all right. So many good comments coming uh, out of the chat. Uh, let's continue on Mayfair. Where are we? So this actually um, goes into monitoring your whereabouts, but digital spying. They check your internet history, uh, emails, texts, call logs. They demand your passwords. Uh, a new one that maybe they didn't have at this point of the article is they will sneak and put uh, tracing apps on your phone so they can find you no matter where you are. Um, that's happened to several people um, that I know that their spouse insisted they have that app on there. Or they would go behind their back and put it on there. Um, mm -hmm. And in today's day and age, if it's done out of, hey, I want to put this app um, just in case you disappear, that's one thing. But to to do it secretly, especially, that's just, just clear cut abuse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you that, that no doubt about it. I mean, that's not negotiated. That's just being uh, <laughs> the pissed off teenage boyfriend that I used to refer to a lot. Uh, oh, baby uh, love the situation was actually a female who did that to their boyfriend. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it runs both ways. I mean, it, no one, no matter the gender is, uh, uh from the crazy jealousy or yeah, abusive tendencies. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Um, unilateral decision making they might close a joint bank account cancel your doctor's appointment or speak with your boss without asking that is in a ds relationship i don't think that that's ever okay you any of that especially speaking with somebody's boss we're adults don't Oh my God. Now I, there have been many a times when I have wanted to <laughs> because, oh, again, that toxic environment, but I didn't, I didn't, you know, I and, come home and crying you, <laughs> and you want to know why I didn't, because I know that that would just make things worse. <clears throat> so uh, financial control, they might keep bank accounts in their name only and make you ask for money. You might be expected to account for every penny you spend. Here again, uh, I I do believe, unless it's a FinDom, meaning financial domination situation, and we've been over that a couple weeks ago or last, last week, week before, um, this is, <clears throat> that's abuse. Uh, lecturing, belabor, <laughs> I cannot say that word, uh, but hammering on your errors, 
with long monologues makes it clear they think you're beneath them. Now, this is something that, um, again, when negotiated, and I do this, I, I'm a master at lecturing, <laughs> but it is not me berating Mayfair uh or anyone else though sometimes it appears because i do take on a different tone when it's taking place i'm a very passionate person and uh, but does that make it okay well it's negotiated so yes the negotiation makes it okay now it that turns to a scene it's a, a lecturing scene and there is discussion following that, usually after a journal entry about it. Right? Mm. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Um, <clears throat> all right. Take the next one. Uh, direct orders. Uh, get dinner on the table now. Stop taking the pill. Uh, orders are expected to be followed despite your plans to the contrary. Which is very much part of our DS world. Um, although, stop taking the pill would not be um, unless that was negotiated and you guys were just playing that scene. Um, it wouldn't be okay for you to just come in tomorrow and be like, "Okay, no more birth control." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, it, it, wait, what? That's between you and your doctor. No matter what the pill is, that's between you and your doctor. Yeah, I th when they say the pill, I think of birth control. Um, yeah, but yeah, of it could be, and something as simple as a antacid. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyway, yeah. uh, go ahead. Uh, outbursts. You were told to cancel that outing with your friend or put the car in the garage, but didn't. So now you have to put up with a red faced tr triad or, or tirade, sorry, um, about how uncooperative you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Outbursts are. Uh, uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. And that's something that I, I struggle with uh, occasionally. I, I was really good on the uh the anger side the discipline but this year <clears throat> i've failed about three or four times on that one um which is why i am going back into therapy to help with that issue uh even though it's situational but you can see a therapist for situational purposes like mourning and grief or uh, long-term severe issues and in this case i definitely need some help with the uh the short term stuff so uh yeah, <laughs> Kurt Carl says, man you two time. weren't playing around this episode is detailed uh percusio hello percusio and rodney just coming in uh contractual agreements and stipulations are so important in the beginning to make lines clear yeah and checking in to make sure that the lines are not being ignored. Yeah. Um, dynamic. And we did an episode that talked about the definition of a dynamic. That means that it's changing. And with those changes, it's something that has to be constantly negotiated. And there are little negotiations throughout the day. There are, uh, those would be like the, the, the mini contract negotiations. There's, there are the minor negotiations and then there's the major renegotiations that you should have scheduled uh, every six months or so, or any time that, and there should be a stipulation that anytime there's major life changes. I mean, that's what we're going through right now with, with the father-in-law moving in with, with myself and my wife, Mayfair and I are about to have to undergo uh, after things calm down a major contract renegotiation um, because there's been some unforeseen things found out on a Saturday that he had to move out of where he was staying. <clears throat> and then 
I think Wednesday or Thursday, it was finalized that he was going to come live with us. And then we were picking him up on the weekend or something like that. I don't know. It may have happened over a two week period, or maybe it was a one week. It was just a blur, but it created some things to that are going to have to change. And we got to roll with it. Um, Just got to. All right. Uh, Treating you like a child. They tell you what to wear, what and how much to eat or which friends you can see. Now, the the one thing on this I want to focus on is which friends you can see. Are they isolating you? Are they trying to keep you from, from, uh, from people? Do they only want you around them and their friends? Are they interjecting themselves into your friendships with other people? Uh, if so, that's abuse. That is absolutely abusive. This one by itself can be 100% abusive. Um, Feigned helplessness. They may say they do not know how to do something. Sometimes it's easier to do it yourself than explain it. Uh, They know this and take advantage of it. That's actually... um... One of the TikTokers I follow, he's a diagnosed narcissist, and he goes over um, things that he's he finally he finally saw it about himself through therapy, um, and he's explaining the things he used to do, and this is a big one for him. Like he's done this so much, and he's like, I have to actively watch to not do that. Yeah. Uh- <clears throat> Current call says the friend control is abuse, but I'm sorry. I will control what a sub wears or eats. That's just how it is. Yeah, no, which is why I didn't really touch on those two. Cause that's, that's common in our world. It can be abusive, especially if there's a lot of, um, you know, shaming involved. Like you need to eat this and this and this because you're putting on weight or, you know, well, you know, you've, you had a baby and you got fat. So it's time to lose that baby weight, that kind of stuff, you know, super restrictive diet. That's actually not healthy. It's just basically a starvation diet. Yeah. Uh, That, that could be definitely something that an abusive Dom air quotes there could, could be um, guilty of. Yeah. Yeah. uh, And anomalous Matt says, if that's negotiated and Kurt Carl says again, agreed. Now my question is, since that is part of DS that you like with dressing people or telling them what to wear and dictating what they eat, would you participate in a DS relationship where the, the uh, submissive said, no, that's a no go. I will not uh, give you control of that. And the reason that I'm asking is simply because I want people to understand that um, it's okay. If you meet somebody who, oh my God, they're so perfect. They're so beautiful. They're so just the perfect amount of brat and they're into the, all the kind of plays that I'm into and blah, 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 except for this one thing. And depending on how important that one thing is to you and your style of DS, are you mature enough to not allow it to create abuse in the situation? And and this is not directed at Kurt. Um, Kurt says we would talk about it. All things are negotiable. And I agree. Uh, But there are some things, some part of my DS, like punishments. I will not participate in a, in a DS dynamic uh, that does not have punishments. Uh, I know baby love and the cons- natural consequences way of doing things that works for them. That's, that's not a style of DS that I want to participate in. So no matter how amazing I thought someone was, if that was not part of it, then that would be the end of the negotiation and the end of the possibility for that. And you have to present that in a way that is not manipulative. 
Because if Mayfair says, no, I don't like that. And she really, 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 really is into me and really wants to, she's like, well, you know, okay. Um, I'll try it. And she's, she's already said, you know, no, I don't, uh, I don't do punishments. Uh, that's a hard limit for me. And then, I and I'm saying, well, I don't participate in DS relationships or DS dynamics without punishments. And all of a sudden she's willing to give it a go. It's up to me to go, you know what? Uh, no, you just said that that's a hard limit. So we don't need to go any further with this and to stick to that because otherwise it is manipulation and we need to be more responsible. I understand it's risk aware, consensual kink, but when we're manipulating people, whether it is intentional or unintentional, uh, it's a problem. It is a problem. Um, deal breakers have to be actively discussed, not just passively accepted into being, Percusio says, and I absolutely 100% agree with that. <clears throat> uh, all right, so unpredictability. They'll explode with rage out of nowhere, suddenly shower you with affection or become dark and moody at the drop of a hat to keep you walking on eggshells. Oh, I hate that feeling. Absolutely hate that feeling. I've done it to people. It's been done to me. Everybody, I think, at some point does it. Um, it's very immature when it's unintentional and unrecognized uh it's very abusive regardless mayfair you have anything on that you want to speak to um it it definitely makes it hard to get out of the situation because you're afraid if you even try to leave or you look like you might be leaving you don't know what's going to happen um this this is very much um it's emotionally abusive, but oftentimes, unfortunately, it's linked with the physical abuse as well. Um, because if when they're unpredictable and they explode out of nowhere so many times, that ends up with someone being beaten mm -hmm. in the unfun ways, <laughs> the non-consensual ways. I want to bring up what fetish artist said. Robin Roberts, founder of Backdrop Club, one of the first modern S&M clubs, Noted, discipline is about structure, not about punishment. Yes. All the yeses. All the yeses. So many comments. I'm sorry. I know I'm missing some really good comments, uh, but we are already at this for an hour. Um, before we read off the last couple on here, I want to go ahead and uh, hit on the rest of the producers all right so if you want to become one of the show producers we do value for value there's no corporate sponsors here uh so if you find value if you want to make a one-time donation coldernscript.com slash paypal or if you want to do a monthly or yearly uh donation you can do that coldernscript.com slash patreon if you want to send snail mail a donation a gift send me an old school check whatever <laughs> Uh, you can do that. The address is in there. Cauldron Entertainment, LLC, 257 North Calderwood Road, number 168, Alcoa, Tennessee, 37701. Um, but the people who do find the value and that I want to recognize right now are the senior producers, Emerald Wolf, Trouble 113, Roxy Bear, That Place in Oklahoma City, Alexandria, Baby Love, and T-Rex, Sort Out the Kinks, Master Gabriel, Not the Daddy, Daddy Steve, Serpent, KJ, Just Tommy, Author, Mistress, Black Rose, Upstate SC Couple, Crystal Force, Callie, Perfectly Thick, Toradon, Odie and Cece, Captain J, Savvy, AK-47, Charlie and Little Bit, and Mr. Beyond. Producers at $5 a month, Kane Sin, Civil Disobedience, Hadea, Sir and Kitten, Raven, Otsila, MBR Poodle, Lilac Wine, Bad Dog Bad, Arctic Fox Glove, Miss Red Sin, AJ, RJ, Catnip, Meow, Wild Time, and Deacon Sean, Cherry Query, Rope Stuff 2, Rabbit, Burning Red Hot, Sir Wolf, Sub X-13, 
Quartz Dom, Gator and Gizmo, JJ, John Shaw, The Cheshire, Ben, Tinker Brat, Brittany, Segment Shadow, Beatrix Kiddo, and Solstice. Junior Producers, K2SO, Jeremiah, Morgana 13, Brody, The Gavin Girl Time Podcast, Lexa, and Ashley. Uh, so, all right. Um, yes, we are going to actually turn this into a two-parter. So uh, the, we've had so many wonderful comments and conversation that this is going to end up being a two-part uh, uh, topic. The, the things that we're going to talk about next week will be accusing, blaming, and denial, emotional neglect and isolation, codependence, and then what to do. So be sure to check back in next Sunday. Uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern, and we can uh, wrap this topic up then. For now, Mayfair, what is the next one on the list to discuss under the heading of control and shame? They walk out in a social situation, stomping out of the room, leaving you holding the bag. At home, it's a tool to keep the problem unresolved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, that that person that I referenced earlier – from the uh, July event, uh, so many of these apply, <laughs> and the the uh, other person just does not see it, and it it makes me sick. I hate it for her that she does not see it um, because she is in such an abusive situation. Uh, but I saw this take place like twice, where uh, he just. You know, yell, 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 walk out. And then, you know, and it was in front of other people, embarrassing uh, her and, uh, you know, not having her best interest at heart. Absolutely pathetic. Uh, the last one on this list, using others. Abusers may tell you that everybody thinks you're crazy or they all say you're wrong. Using others as a way to fight your battle. Well, you know what, uh, Mayfair, I, I, I know you keep saying this and you keep thinking this way, but I mean, I've talked to other people about it and people have come to me and talked to me about it. And they all agree. You're just being stupid. You're just, you're out of your head on this one. Well, first off, that's just disrespectful. I'm going to other people, talking to other people about an issue between you and I. And second off, who are these people? Because nine out of ten times when somebody says that, they're a liar. They haven't talked to anybody because abusers don't want other people to know that they're abusers. They want to hide. They want to look shiny and pretty. Oh, Jen. Hello, Jen. It is so good to see you. Uh, yeah, long time no listen. You've been missed. Um, yeah, keep keep the appearances shiny. So, all um, right. Before we head out, um, Justin had a, another one that I think probably fits into this, and it's, it's definitely one that... Um, it's a hundred percent abuse. There is no no other way to put it. Um, it does not fit into to BDSM anywhere. If it's if it's done, it's abusive. When they threaten suicide if you leave, make you responsible for their life. It's totally unacceptable. You cannot fix someone. You can support them and you can be there for them, but doing that to someone is wrong. You mm -hmm. cannot fix another person. You cannot stop another person or you cannot. F mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, if you're depressed, please seek professional help. If you're having thoughts of hurting yourself or others, call 911 immediately or the national suicide hotline, which you can text them as well at 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. Um, yeah, 
most of the time, if they actually do something, it's, I mean, they may screw up and get it right, but it's not intentional. They're just trying to make, uh, make some attention for you. Abusers will do the craziest thing. I know PWB has shared so much of her personal story with, with the cryptors, uh, through the show and the comments. And if I'm not mistaken, that was, that was also one. Well, if I can't have you can't be with you or anybody else, then, uh, you know, I'm just going to do the thing and blah, blah, blah. And let me tell you, if somebody's a narcissist, they're not going to do the thing. <laughs> they may, they may act like they're going to do the thing. They may do part of the thing, meaning some, some minor little surface stuff or whatever. Uh, but chances are they're not going to actually do the thing. And yeah, for those that don't know, uh, when I said Jen earlier, that is bruised tonsils. Um, bruised tonsils is half of the duo for the Gab and girl time podcast. Guys, if, if, uh, you want to know what women think, <clears throat> if, I mean, really think in an uncensored, unfiltered way, check out the Gab and Girl Time podcast. Uh, <laughs> it, it, yeah, check it out. It's great. Uh, so anyway, um, so, which I'm so far behind on episodes, I, I hope that you're still putting them out. Um, it Y'all make some amazing content. It's hilarious. It's emotional at times, even though you're both very, uh, you know, stoic and <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're great. Yeah. 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 Definitely not. They're very animated women. Um, great, great, great people. So, oh, of course you're quite welcome for the shout out. I, I love you guys. Uh, one day I'll get to meet, uh, Gail. I hope so. Go ahead, Mayfair. So you, you hinted at it, um, but I want to make sure that people understand um, the other side as well. Uh, threatening suicide is abusive. Um, and I know it seems obvious, but I do want to say that if they threaten you, obviously that's also abusive. If I can't have you, no one else will. Um, that is 100% abusive. There are hotlines. Um, I don't have any of those linked. Um, honestly, if you call just the number we have on the screen, the suicide hotline, they could probably connect you to someone if you are in that kind of situation. Because um, once the, it, if they threaten to hurt you, there is a potential for them to hurt you. And no one deserves to be in that situation. Absolutely. So, yeah, thank you for making that more clear than what I was. <laughs> you you said it kind of, but I wanted to make sure if, you know, if they threaten to kill you if you leave, get help yeah. immediately. As soon as you can. As soon as you can get a safe way away from them for just even a short time, talk to someone and get help. Yeah. Uh, Curtin... Uh, Kurt was asking where to find Gavin Girl Time. Uh, it's on Spotify, Apple, Google, all of the places. Um, and I put a link in the chat that goes to the Google search for it. So uh, I highly recommend using a, a, uh, a podcast player that is podcasting 2.0. Uh, compliant, like uh, Podcast Addict or Overcast. Both of those are, uh, and the reason why is there's just a bunch more features, things that you can find in there that uh, ways to tip people or donate to their shows. You can now donate through uh, uh, Satoshi's, which is like 0 0.000001 Bitcoin or something like that. So um, that's available even for for uh, our show. So uh, yeah, you can donate with cryptocurrency now. Um, WIC or Women in Crisis is a good resource for that Mayfair, says Justin. PWB says nine one one is the number. 
<laughs> it's like there you go. Nine one one is the number. Nine one one is is definitely a very good resource, but a lot of women are afraid to pull that trigger right off the bat. Yeah, because oh, he hasn't hit me yet, or it wasn't that bad. They don't want to get that far involved, um, mm-hmm. and probably men as well, because I think men do get abused. Absolutely, I know men get abused, um, but I think it may be harder for men to reach out to the police, especially because they know some guy's going to come. You're going to have that macho cop potentially, Mm. and you're going to feel ashamed. And it's not your fault that you're being abused. It's the abuser's fault, but there is shame that goes along with it that you have to work through as the victim. Mm -hmm. So calling these outside numbers that aren't going to be like a big police force show up or anything like that, and they can just quietly get you out of the situation without the explosive or the volatile nature of the police is sometimes an easier option um, in certain situations. I would never discourage 911. Don't get me wrong. If you're in immediate danger, absolutely. But there are other ways that don't require you to have to face all of that right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, You sh- the 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 shame i mean it's it's a real thing absolutely that people feel and you can talk about well you shouldn't feel that way it's not your fault you know you you can't help who you love and you just happen to be in love with somebody um that was abusive and all of that sounds amazing and wonderful but in the midst of the situation negating someone feeling that way by telling them these things is almost it's it's disrespectful it's patronizing and it's just not helpful um a lot of times when we we want to say something to help and the best thing that we can do is sit there and shut up and listen uh, especially for somebody that talks as much as i do it's very difficult I mean, <laughs> Mayfair's laughing at me, but it's true. I mean, and to think I used not to talk this much until I started, you know, teaching classes uh, at the hospital years ago and, and all that. I wasn't near as talkative as I am now. Um, like I, I, I annoy myself. So, and I've reached that point in this episode. So that means that it is going to be time to, uh, to knock it out. All right, Mayfair, um, where did we drop off here? Oh, I um, see. So we're going to be starting at number six, mm-hmm. and I'm going to put a uh, start here for next week. So now you guys know what we're going to be doing next week. Again, accusing, blaming, and denial, emotional neglect and isolation, codependence, and then, of course, what to do. We're, we're going to dive more into what to do um, as long as there's time. I mean, we could end up turning this into a three-parter because that what to do can be an entire hour, hour episode by itself. But So um, they do at the bottom. I know we're not there, um, but I just share it just now to chat. Uh, National Domestic Abuse Hotline, 1-800-799-7233. Again, that is 1-800-799-7233. If you're being abused, call this number and they can help you. And it's like the suicide National Suicide Hotline where you can call or text. Oh, cool. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, you can call or text that and uh, someone will, will be quick to respond or to answer, of course. So, excellent. Thank you for throwing that out there. I even though I threw these show notes in here, I didn't even realize that that was one of the numbers that was on there. <laughs> I I just happened to scroll down and was like, oh, hey, look, a number. <laughs> gotcha. Well, so. That's funny because I still don't. Hmm. I still don't see it, but that's I okay. I highlighted in the show notes. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Bruce Donald says, I love three-parters. Um <laughs> You too. Killed it today. Excellent show. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, You know, so much of what we do live on Sundays is because of all of you that come back week after week. 
And so I'm going to flip that compliment around on you, Kurt, and every single person that is uh, that is viewing on Twitter, Facebook, and here on the YouTubes. So please, again, go ahead, like, share, subscribe. If you're not, uh, I get notifications to my phone every time somebody subscribes. And I've decided that whoever happens to be number 1,000, they're going to get a T-shirt. So that's going to be the thing. So if you're a subscriber 1,000, you're going to get a free T-shirt. And I think that we are at, I want to say like 980, something like that. So, all right. Vendors that we know, like, trust, and use, bdsmcontracts.org. Use coupon code COLDRIN20 for 20% discount on all purchases. Whipping Stripes, my personal maker, most things of leather and paracord impact toys. Uh, Torrid Timber, fine fetish furniture and accessories. The Crafty Hedonist. All these links are in the sh are in the description below. They're in the show notes. Uh, Tink's Toys, Facebook group profile, and the uh, FetLife profile is down below. There's a coupon for listeners on your first time purchase. Use the code Tink's Toys One Three, and that will. Uh, that will get you a 13% discount off your first purchase. Dark Delight Shop. I did a product review. If you watch that video, you can also find a coupon code there. I'm not going to tell you what it is here. You got to watch that video to get the coupon code there. Uh, pin, a lot of, I'm not wearing my vest today, but a lot of the pins that I wear, she also has clothes and just a lot of really, really cool, cool stuff. Check it out. Now, even if you don't buy anything, I recommend checking it out. And then, of course, uh, fetishforlife.com. I cannot put a link in there because it will get tagged. Um, oh, Toward Timber is at Blackthorn Virtual Market that's happening today. So I guess just do a Google search for Blackthorn vir Virtual Market. Uh, you may be able to find it that way or look up Fetish Artist on FetLife because I uh, believe they said that they posted a link there as well. So, uh, all right. All of our contact info is down below. If you want to get in touch with Mayfair, please uh, go through me to do that as I don't want her inundated with a bunch of uh, random piggish BS. Um, <laughs> so... All right, this is going to wrap up the main part of the show. We're going to have just a couple minutes of aftercare here, and uh, that's what we call the post-show. So with that said, this has been Master Cauldron and Mayfair. For cauldronscrypt.com, stick around for a few more minutes while we continue to unearth the truth. All right. Wow. So I want to talk about some play. <laughs> so uh mayfair when did you and i seen uh last weekend yeah last weekend so i had a good old-fashioned just straight up spanking oh curtain call says can i get a necktie I, I don't have any neckties i do have a pin uh you know like for my vest um, that you could put on a, a it'd look good on a black satin necktie. It might be a little heavy, but hey, at least it wouldn't uh, flop around on you. <laughs> um, some play. Ooh, yeah, Art Kitten had some play. Uh, so last weekend got to have a, a, Two scenes with Mayfair. One was a forced orgasm scene. <laughs> Lucky number 13 that was able to be counted. And then um, there was the spanking scene. And then last night I had two impact scenes. And, not with uh, Mayfair. Not with Mayfair. Uh, with two, I didn't ask permission and I'm not going to call them out and say who they were. Uh, just that it had been a long damn time since we had played and it was good. And I made two people cry. 
and it was beautiful. Beautiful tears of release. It was beautiful. Uh, actually, I was kidding, but that actually sounds not. Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I'm, I think I've got your. Uh, no, I don't. Never mind. I was gonna say I think I have your address, but that's a lie. I don't have your address. So uh, yeah, it's uh, and it was good. <laughs> then there was much rejoicing. Yay to the gods! <laughs> yeah, it was it was amazing. Um, I just I haven't really. Uh, I found myself in a weird place of not trusting myself to play and to be able to uh, break through that and actually have some playful impact again. It was really, really nice. So uh, (laughs) Bruce Totsil says, I love making people cry. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, thank you, Art. Art Kitten says, I'm glad you broke through it. Yeah. Um, one person, I will say, likes the combination of Thuddy and Stingy. So I got to uh, got to break out the whip and uh, use, you know, use my single tail that the community had given me. Um, that was Oh, I missed that thing so much. It is truly an extension of myself. Uh, that's the one toy that I have that I I will not let other people touch. I, I just, you know, play with. It, it, some people, uh, I will uh, hand it over and show it to them and, you know, but no, don't play with it. So I just got a question that I... Uh, asked how's that i'm not sure what that how's that meant um hmm mayfair do you have any idea what the how's that meant Mm -mm. okay i'll need a little bit more on that one if you can shoot me a little bit more um uh the picture didn't come through Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Now yeah. this was a, this was a message on discord. Um, and it's not relevant to the show. <laughs> so the, yeah, the, the, the picture did not come through. So you'll have to uh, try that again. Uh, she's uh, doing some, some artistic stuff, I believe. And uh, wanted to know what I thought about it, but anyway, um, yeah, breaking through and being able to, to uh, play again and do the thing. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Uh, Emerald Wolf is my administrator in the Discord group. That's a private group. You have to donate a minimum of $5 per month uh, or $55 for a year. You get a, a one month discount right now um if you donate for an entire year and that's at all levels uh but we are working on or she is working on uh some new t-shirt concepts coffee mug concepts for me and just sent me one that is definitely going to be used so i will be sure to post that and announce that when these are ready um Art Kitten says, I'm going to be trying Wartenberg Wills and possibly a needle tasting this coming Saturday. Congratulations on that. Uh, The Wartenberg Will, um, well, it's in the other room. It's in the playroom. Would you like to go grab it real quick? Uh, No, it's the little spiked wheel uh, that's used in medical testing. You can also, it's fun to use with with electroplay. Or on people who like sharp, pointy things. Yeah, or on people that like sharp, pointy things. Like how we broke the one you have. One of them. I have multiples. <laughs> Those things are Not so now. cheap. 
Yeah. What? <laughs> you little shit. <laughs> Sorry. You little shit. You're being a brat. <laughs> Not now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about fun times. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. Well, uh, people are dropping off, which means that we're getting boring. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. It looks like a spur on a handle. Yeah, mm-hmm. like uh, the old country western spurs. Yes, I broke it on Mayfair. It was a cheap one. It it I pushed down a little hard, uh, and it fell apart. PWB says yes, yes, yes. Electric play. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you so much. Be sure to tune in next week as we continue talking about uh, how to recognize abuse and point out some very specific ways, really dive deep into the, the woods of psychology on this topic and hopefully help you to get out of an abusive situation um, or recognize that one may be starting. You know, I have found that a lot of times people don't jump into a relationship planning to abuse people, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Uh, so recognizing these signs and being able to catch it in yourself first and then go to your partner and say, Hey, um, I've been doing these things and these things are wrong And I didn't recognize it until Cauldron and Mayfair was talking about it. You know, that shows a big sign of maturity. Now, people can also use that. The ones who do enter into relationships as a way to to abuse people. There's that honeymoon phase that typically lasts for around six months where it's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then quickly leads into you're the one who's sorry. You're the one that that made me do this. You're the reason that I treated you this way. It's because you're such a, a shit sub and you'll never amount to anything. And nobody else will ever want you if you're not with me. Who are you going to be with? Blah, blah, blah. And then there's a huge blow up. And then it's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I'm such a terrible person. I'll go get help. And then they never go get help or they lie to you and tell you that they're getting help and they're not on and on and on. If you recognize this type of situation, you're an abusive. You are in an abusive situation. Get the fuck out. Because, and this is the, this is a part that people don't like. Once you recognize that this is happening, you are now responsible for staying in or leaving. Now, I understand it's hard. I've been in abusive relationships. But ultimately, that moment of of recognition is the moment that you have the responsibility to get out. And it's so incredibly hard to do for so many different reasons. But you can do it. Um, PWB, she did it. It took a while. It was hard, but she did it. And, um, the, the healing and the relief that it has come, uh, the, the person that she is now compared to the person that she was then are two totally different people. Um, The strength in being able to to get out of that situation. uh, It's like, you know, she was a beautiful person before, and now that's just magnified. It's so much greater. And in fact, she goes into great detail on the Gabbing Girl Time podcast in a multiple, uh, I believe it's a uh, two-parter, two-part episode, Uh, episodes talking about it and I highly recommend it highly. If you, if you think that you're in that kind of situation, go check that out and um, you know, go, go through the the weeds with her and her journey. Um, 
uh, it can it can be of great help. So, all right. Uh, she says, I knew a three, I knew in three months he was an abuser and he had me wrapped by then. And it took what, five years. I can't remember how many years y'all were together. Mayfair, do you remember? I'm sure she'll post it, but I don't, I don't mm -hmm. recall, but yeah. Um, I mean, I was in my emotionally abusive relationship for 10. Yeah. So it's hard to leave. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, it's hard as hell to leave. But my God, it feels so good when you do. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. when you, at first it doesn't, but then like when you finally hit that moment and you realize, and pardon my language, but fuck, I can breathe again finally. It's so, so good. Um like even thinking back like it brings tears to my eyes um having that i made it out and i'm not crazy and i'm not stupid and i'm not all of these things that they were telling me for so long and i can breathe and not be in fear of being told how loud i'm breathing <laughs> like it's there's Yeah. It's worth getting out. I promise. It gets better when you get out. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, PWB says, yep, five years plus three years in court. And uh, Curtin Call says that his was five years. Um, so what you're saying is I'm a slow learner, guys. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you learned. That's the important part. <laughs> That's, that's the important part you learn. But with that, I mean, am I right though? Once you realize what it is, that's when the responsibility falls on you. Right. Mm. To get out because they're it, not going to put you out. No. Um. They're, they're reaping the, the, the rewards of your abuse. They're not going to put you out. No, they're not. And they're going to continue to abuse you. Um, but the caveat to what you're saying is, yes, it is your responsibility to leave. But even though that is, it's your responsibility to leave, it is not your fault you're being abused. Um, right. I think that's a very, very big part of that sentence that, that needs to be said. Yes, it. you have to leave. You have to take that responsibility. But it's not your fault they are the way they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's not your fault you're being abused. Yeah. They're the yeah. defective one, not you. Oh, well put. That is going to be on a, a T-shirt. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Write that down. Um, that is going to be on a T-shirt. Just that they're the defective you're not the, one? You're not the defective one. They are. <laughs> or however. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, that's going to wrap us up for today. Thank you all so very much for, uh, for checking in for anybody that, uh, wants to join the household tonight for dinner. We're going to be at the usual spot having the Mexican food and, uh, and, uh, uh you know, split ahead. peaches that, uh, you've talked about a few times, right? Yeah. They are in that, uh, market. Oh, I've kind awesome. of been browsing the market um, while we were while you were can talking you about your plate. Can you shoot me that link so I can throw it in there? Uh, Split yeah. peaches is freaking awesome. They, um, uh, the um, person I can't remember, fetish artist put it in our Discord. Okay, well I can't. So let me see here. I'm getting back to events. it. Sorry. Events. Uh, there. Let's it see is. if it'll go through. I don't know if it will. Copy message link. It's in chat. I well, I can't post a FetLife link. It's not. It's to the blackthornorg.org. dot org. Okay. Uh, it's in general chat. Yes, sir. Uh, bear with me, folks. Technologies. Uh. Anomalous mats. 
Oh, I got to scroll way down here. All right, here we go. Copy this link and post it. All right, so here is the link to the uh, online vendor fair today uh, that we've talked about several times. So there it is. You can uh, check Aww. that out. What? It you, it posted the Discord. <laughs> oh. Um, I sent you the other link um, in our private chat in StreamYard, sir. Uh, private chat in StreamYard. Okay. Well, crap. Control, copy, and control, paste. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm just trying to get them the link. <laughs> there we go. Hey. Can't post. All right, there it goes. All right, it let me post it. All right, so there you go. Um, yeah, I really need to get the split peaches. Uh, they are a trusted vendor, and they are all. It's an affiliate. And I really need to get that into the show notes because I do have an affiliate program with them. So if you purchase from them, it does make a, a small donation to the show. But uh, I, I keep forgetting to do that. So I will try to get that done. But if you see anything at the vendor fair, don't wait to purchase from them. Go ahead, make the purchase, support these kinky artists, these real kinksters making really kinky things for us. Um, it's, I can't tell you just how important that is, especially in COVID because they're not being able to go out to a lot of these conventions. So super important. So the split peaches and uh fetish for life, check both of those out. And Torrid so, Timber. And Torrid Timber is going to be there. Uh, as well so all right well guys that's going to be it uh time to say goodbye mayfair bye mayfair <laughs> bye everybody <laughs>